Hey, photo world, welcome back to another episode here on TakingTalkPics.com. This is another episode from the former podcast. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join the email list. Let's get to that 1,000 subscriber marker so that way I can add a new video every single week. Enjoy. Welcome, photo world, to Take and Talk Picks. This is episode 17. I'm your host, Rob Kruger, and thank you for tuning in. Every pro goes through that, I think. Everybody. I think we all have creative blocks. Yeah, absolutely. Today's featured guest is Barrett Bizjack, owner of Images by Barrett. Barrett is an award-winning wedding photographer whose work has been featured in publications such as Inside Weddings, The Knot Magazine, Style Me Pretty, and Brides Magazine. Her so far 17 years as a wedding photographer shines through in each image captured. Barrett's portfolio reflects her refined skill and ability in seeing as a true talent in the world of wedding photography. Barrett, welcome to Take and Talk Picks. Thank you, Rob. That was really nice. Thank you. It's just scratching the surface on who you are and a little bit about your photography business. Could you take this moment and uh, share some of that with us? Absolutely. I was driven to photography by realizing that I saw things differently than other people and I could evoke feelings and emotions through my work. And it's not work for me. It's a total pleasure all the time. I love it. I'm often asked, do you still really love photographing weddings? And the answer is absolutely yes. No question. I love it from beginning to end. And I think part of that is because of the humanity involved in working in wedding photography. I love people. I feel so fortunate to be working in the Northeast where we have so much diversity. It's just incredible for me to see and learn different traditions and cultures and to honor them and to document them and to be a part of their history. It's just amazing to be able to do that and to form relationships and very long lasting relationships with most of my clients because it's, it's much more than just using a camera. It's much, much more. You just kind of hit a bunch of key points that I always feel with <laughs> wedding photography, and I'm sure Photo World Listening has felt this with their their photography, if they're doing weddings or other things. The humanity, yeah, the photography part, that's what drives us, and it's a good passion, and we love what we do, but there's something about the people that makes it more fun and interesting, and family dynamic is always a good time um, mm -hmm. to, yep. to see how it works out or isn't mm -hmm. working out in the room because we've seen it all. And then people asking, you know, do you really still love weddings? Do you really still like that? It's like, no offense to my early clients, but I feel like it's getting better as I go and more enjoyable. There There's something different about wedding photography. It's not that fallback for the artist who can't make it. You know, it's it's a whole right. nother ball game and you really have to love the whole combination of what's involved. So it shows in your work. It comes yeah. through in your tone. You really have this passion for it. Oh, thank you. And and really, a lot of it is, I really do love people. I love the diversity. I love seeing things come to the foreground, like finally recognizing gay marriages and, you know, other things like that that are coming to the forefront that just make me, it's exhilarating. I'm so happy to see this and to be a part of it. And, um, you know, being able, it, you know, feels like an honor. And I know a lot of people feel that way. It feels like an honor to be able to document those, those moments, those things for people and do it in a creative way. I mean, it's a great job, but it, it's also surrounded by a ton of love. So if it, I think if you don't truly love it, you're going to be miserable. So Barrett, let's get the inspiration flowing even more. So let's, let's hear mm -hmm. what kind of works for you and your business. And I like to start it off with a quote or a mantra that you live by on a day-to-day -day basis for your photography? Daily with, with both my business and my personal life. Um, I, I have a husband and two children. It, it is treat others as you wish to be treated and be true to yourself. It's, it's really not to worry so much about the outside and what other people may think. Um, it's just being kind to people, treat them in a way 
that you want to be treated, but also, you know, don't don't amend who you are or don't be something else or don't become something to be included in a group or to be liked by someone or, you know, it's really being authentic. Uh, authentic is a big word around here. We use that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Be your authentic self. That's kind of where I was going with that and what I was hearing. But uh, it's not the first time we've heard it here on Taking Talk Picks of just treat others as you'd like to be treated. You hear that as a kid growing up, you, you get that little lesson here and there throughout life. But so many people put this mask on and go to work or they put this mask on and start a business. And it's like, that's not you. Just be real. And, and right. it will take you places you can't imagine. So, Barrett, can you share with Photo World what exactly sparked your interest in photography enough to pursue it as a career? It was probably my time in college. I was a fine arts student and I actually started studying theater. I went to school for theater, which I had done all throughout school, high school and middle school. And then as a part of my fine art degree, I just started into photography and this was film and it was a film camera. I loved black and white and I loved what that did. And I remember just on my own, not as part of a class, taking my first camera and I actually have the first frame I ever shot. It was an ordinary gray day and they were black wire chairs with a big puddle around them and just getting that and the contrast and the reflection and all that kind of stuff. And I thought, you know, from that point on, I was just going around and I felt like people would have a reaction to what I was seeing, you know, that it would evoke an emotion and they were a little more creative. And, you know, I was able to really hone in on my skill, not just really as a photographer, but as a fine artist meaning that I studied everything. And I think it all applies to photography, but I learned all the components and was very inspired when I was in college. Barrett, I know that a lot of us as photographers, it's great what we do. We love what we do. And there's this awesome, fun feeling that gets to go with shooting, but running a business can be difficult sometimes. And that comes with failure moments and learning the hard way. And in that learning process, can you recall a time where something just didn't go quite right and you had to learn a lesson there? Um, well, I think overall, the biggest lesson for me was that, um, you know, kind of looking at my first few years and realizing that owning a photography business is is actually percentage wise, it's more about the business than it is about the actual photography. So today, I would say that shooting weddings because I'm a hundred percent weddings is really about t like actually being there on the wedding day and shooting is about 10% of what I do. Right. And I shoot just weddings. So everything else. And that, that was, you know, that was kind of tough. I always thought I could farm things out. I thought, well, I'll get an accountant and I'll get a bookkeeper and I'll get this and I'll get that. But the fact is as the owner as much as I hate numbers and I hate accounting, I have to know it. And I do, um, you know, marketing, I happen to love, um, but it's just the actual part that I love so much is a very small percentage of it, but it's still worth it to me. It's still worth it because right. everything goes into that, that occurrence, everything goes into, to what I'm doing on the wedding day. Everything I'm doing is for that goal. So, you know, it's a small percentage, but it's a big payoff. Is there something that you would say is the most important practice to your photography? Something that shines in your workflow from start to finish, it's there every time? My instincts. I never, ever, ever question my instinct. Sometimes I know I will say to someone, you may think I'm crazy, but I think this is going to look awesome. I've never had someone say, no, I don't want to do that. So it's my instincts and, and my personal and professional ethic, which are one and the same. It's just an ethic of following through and doing what I say I'm going to do, following my instinct. But sometimes your instinct has to be tempered with the specific client. You know, right. it, it can't always be. I mean, some clients are far more whimsical than others or some are far more traditional. But I really, really, from the very beginning, I can say I've always trusted my instinct. I, I don't know if that's what you were looking that for. That is what I'm looking for. It's exactly what we're looking for. And I think it comes down to if you're trusting yourself with that and putting it out there, you know, letting your clients know, hey, this is where we're going next. This is what we're doing. And they don't worry about that. They just say yes. There's a few reasons behind that, not because 
they assume you're going to be able to because you're the photographer, but they trust you. They've built up something to that point to go, if she says it, we're just going to go with it because it's going to be right. We know that. That's why we picked her. That's why we hired Barrett. Barrett, we have a wide range of photographers listening, and I was wondering if you could share with the photo world one thing you believe can lead to growth and success in a photography business, regardless of its current level. I would say it would be a commitment to the industry and to working really hard. Also, there's a realization similar to what I have is that the actual photography, if you're owning your own business, is not going to be the bigger part of your job when you're starting particularly. I would say what's going to lead to growth is being authentic to yourself, making a commitment to working and learning, and that it's it's not an overnight profession. The only way you get there is doing it. You know, doing it's a it. marathon. It's not a sprint. Nobody, these get rich quick overnight things, Doesn't few happen. and far between, and they just don't really exist. So, you know, do the work. It's, it's right. hard, but it pays off. It's true. Right, right. I, um, I remember 10 years ago, um, I wanted to challenge myself in becoming a certified professional photographer. And that to me was a very big challenge because it's a lot of the science and the physics behind the work. And that's not my first love, but I thought, let me do this because I want, I want to hold my, myself to that standard and know that I can do it. And I did it, but it was hard. It, it's hard. It's, you know, you got to force the other side of your brain, you know, to, to learn this stuff so that when you're on location, when you're in the middle of a wedding with a tight schedule, you can do it. I get, and I'm sure you do too, Rob, get a lot of requests for, you know, can I shadow you? Can I, can I look at you and see what you do? And can you teach me how to do this, you know, on a wedding? And, and it's not that I don't want to teach. I think what you're doing is the right way to teach. It's just that there's no magic answer. There's no magic bullet. There's no, you know, I always guide people to resources where they can learn seminars, go out and do it every single day. That's the kind of work and commitment it takes. I, I don't think digital has changed that. I think um, you still have to go out and work really hard. And it's 24 seven. I mean, this is my baby. I work seven days a week. Yeah. And usually 10, 12 hour days. Yeah. Photo, photo world. Yeah. If you're not thinking about your photography business every second you're awake and then having nightmares about your business <laughs> every <laughs> night you go to sleep, then, <laughs> then you got to work a little harder because yeah. I get that freak out nightmare where my camera bag right. goes missing. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, the you just... anxiety dreams where you wake up and you forgot your cards. Or yeah. Whatever. Barrett, have you had an aha moment during your career so far? Yes. And it's been very recent. Um, and the aha moment was how important it was for me to invest in marketing and administration um, at the point I am at in my business. So, um, in my 15th year, uh, two years ago, I was just getting very frustrated um, because the whole shift of how people look for things, find things, um, view things is changing. Um, so to me, it was an investment in being able to be found and being visible to my client. So that was, that was huge for me. I was like, okay, you know, it was like, I was kind of tentative about spending all the money to invest in it, but you know, I'm really glad I did that. And I, and I do need someone else to do that for me because I don't want to do that. I'm busy. I want to focus on the photography. So, um, that was a big one for me, big, 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 and a big investment, but I'm really happy I did it. Can you share with the photo world the time where you thought this is an I made it moment, you know, something that just shined and showed up like, yes, I'm doing it. I made it. Here we go. I had to think about that because, you know, really, I keep my head down. I'm so happy at what I'm doing. I, I work with real numbers. I work with real images. You know, I don't I don't look to the outside to establish what I'm going to do. I, I do that on my own. Um and, I, you know, I'm working along probably three years in business. Like I said, my head down, just working on my stuff, learning. Um, and one day, I think I got, I don't know if it was a call or an email. It was from an editor 
uh, from a major wedding magazine. And she said, we saw this picture of yours and we'd like to print it full page. It was, it was a close up of a bride. Um, and I thought, holy cow, a magazine wants my, they want my picture. So that was kind of a moment where I felt it, it was like a confirmation from the outside world. You know, it was saying, yeah, it's, it's great. We love it. And it, it sure enough, it got printed. Um, the magazine is now defunct. It was Elegant Bride. But um, it, it was just such a moment for me. Um, I don't think that really defined, you know, a made it moment, but it just was kind of like a confirmation for me. And, and by that, I mean, you know, I, like I've always felt, I think success to me is being happy and, and plugging along and learning and providing something and sustaining my business. That's, you know, that's really what success means to me. So I've kind of always felt that way, but it's really nice to get an acknowledgement like that, you right. know? That, and that was the first one I had. And I, I think it's uh, it's it's not that it's worded poorly on my end. It's just a good way to say it. But really, it comes down to it's it ends up being something that really validates what you do. You know, it gives value to what you're doing, and it kind of gives you this little sigh of relief, like okay, I'm on the right track. Whatever that means, I'm on the right track, and I'm happy to be here. Right. So exactly, that's the feeling. Mm. It is the feeling. It's like okay, people will buy my work. You know, <laughs> it's it, it, so yes, I agree with that completely. During your career so far, Barrett, what is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice? Focus on the business, I believe. I think in the very beginning of my business, I was also told, hire a really good accountant, a really good lawyer. Even if you think you're not going to need an accountant and you're not going to need a lawyer, you do. All of us do. I mean, we've all had times where... And I've used, it's, it's not all been bad, but it's, you know, the, I have had moments where I've needed both of them a lot. <laughs> so um, I, I think, and really learning to focus on the business, I imposed on myself the work ethic and the skill set um, and continuing to feed my creative soul. Um, but the harder part for me as an artist was moving over to the other side of my brain and you know, getting the legal stuff in order, getting the accounting in order. And if anything, I've heard from people that are starting, you know, they're not keeping track of, of their costs of running their business and invoicing. And that is so important. Otherwise, you're just going to have a nightmare in front of you. Absolutely. That's going to be really hard to unravel. Yeah. Yeah. Come April, you're going to be uh, having a good time with that one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Barrett, if you had to start your photography all over, you have the same gear and the same knowledge that you currently have, but there's no business when you wake up tomorrow, no website, no publications. What would you do first to start your new photography business? Well, overall research, trends, identifying my specific market, who they are, um, how, how do I reach them? By the way, I do that every day. But yes, I, I think the most important thing is to know who your market is. Who are you selling to? Who do you want to attract? And then how do you attract them? How do I start? You know, and I would look for online sources. I would I would get myself, you know, dressed up and I would hit the pavement, as they say. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I would go to the places where I want to work. I would try to get meetings with people. I would focus on making uh, relationships or fostering relationships with people in the industry. And I still do that. I do that a lot. And I do it with LinkedIn. I do it with Facebook and with Instagram. Just I think knowing your specific market is really important and still being true to yourself you know, doing, doing what you love and doing what comes naturally to you. I, I, I really do think that would be the first thing I would do. I think you really hit a great point there in saying, you know, just get some research out of the way. And because we all kind of get wrapped up in this, I love what I'm doing and I'm just going to go do it. But for who? I mean, no offense, mm -hmm. but if there's no real target where you're going, you're kind of just shooting in the dark in a lot of directions and you don't have a niche, you don't have a market, you don't have a client. So I right. think it's good to hone in on where, then go pursue it. So I think that's a really great start. Do you have an app or internet resource you can share with Boto World that they could benefit from knowing about? 
Oh, an app or internet resource. So I think the online groups are invaluable. I'm in several on Facebook. I, you know, it's just a community of professional photographers. There are so many groups out there. There's one group in particular I love, and it's former DWFers. So there's a lot of really very talented people in there, and you can go there for advice all the time. What is one piece of gear that you could not live without? Easy, easy answer. Canon 85 millimeter F1.2. I can't count how many times I've heard that. So uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it must be the piece of gear. Yeah, it's it's incredible. It's my go-to and I use it over 50% of the day. Wow. On a wedding. I do. That's I love awesome. it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, who needs a zoom when you got legs, you know? Just <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I love that lens though. It's it's just so beautiful and it's so versatile. There's a lot you can do with it. I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Barrett, please share with Photo World one parting piece of guidance, the best way that we can reach you, whether it's your website or some sort of social media, and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Parting guidance would be authenticity, authenticity, authenticity. Be true to yourself. Don't be afraid of the hard work. Just do it. Nobody's going to do it for you. Just do it. There's a saying, I'm sure some people will know who Brene Brown is, but it's don't try to win over the haters. You're not a jackass whisperer. Don't worry about what other people are saying. Keep focused on yourself and your own business and and hold yourself to your own standards. Get your own standards in place and be comfortable with yourself. So authenticity is the bottom line for me. Where can we find you on online? My website is images by Barrett dot com everything is there to reach me my blog twitter instagram google plus everything is there and that's that's really the front door to my business it is to everybody's actually so that's the best way because i you can go anywhere from there <laughs> perfect uh-huh. well barrett i cannot thank you enough for your time today in sharing such great value photo world thanks you and happy shooting thank you Hey Photo World, do you travel for your shoots? Maybe you have been booked for a destination wedding. It could just be that brief time you have to get away and take it easy. Whatever the reason, head to besttravelforless.com where you can book all your travel needs. You can bundle the hotel and auto rental, book a flight for your next cruise, or host your next family reunion and point everyone in the right direction with besttravelforless.com. Richard and Judy will be there to answer your questions and help you with what you are planning. They are your personal travel agents without all those nasty fees. You can find your way from the TakeAndTalkPics.com affiliates page or reach them directly at BestTravelForLess.com. Thank you, Photo World, for tuning in to another great episode here on Take and Talk Picks. I hope you got the amazing value that I did out of this episode in interviewing our featured photographer for today. If you'd like to learn more about this photographer and the other photographers that we have interviewed in the past, head to TakeandTalkPicks.com. 